Welcome back to my Breeders Cup sponsored handicapping segment here on Better Things with Joe Bianca. We've done two of these so far. First one couldn't have gone much better. I picked the winner of the Haskell Cyberknife at almost eight to one, made about $558 profit. Unfortunately, last time for the Whitney, my horse scratched. America, American Revolution scratched the day of the race. So we had no action in there. So why not just go a little bit harder this time around? This Saturday, we have two televised Breeders' Cup Challenge qualifiers. Saturday, September 3rd on NBC and Peacock from 4.30 to 6 o'clock. You can watch the Jockey Club Gold Cup and the Flower Bowl Stakes from Saratoga. The Jockey Club Gold Cup is, of course, a qualifier for the $6 million Breeders' Cup Classic, the richest race in North America. And the Flower Bowl is a qualifier for the Grade 1 Philly and Mayor, Breeders' Cup Philly and Mayor Turf, which is a $2 million race. Let's start with the Jockey Club Gold Cup. Todd Pletcher has four of the eight horses, one of which I got burned by last time with the late scratch of American Revolution. And unfortunately, he'll probably be half the price Saturday that he would have been in the Whitney. Probably close to five to two second choice behind Olympiad at seven to five or eight to five. So my strategy within the race is to try to beat Olympiad in the first two slots. So I'm going to use five American Revolution, six first captain and eight dynamic one as the three horses who I think will be best at a mile and a quarter, which is the Jackie Cup Gold Cup distance. Been run at Belmont historically. Breaks my heart a little bit as a kid who grew up going to Belmont to see it at Saratoga, but it's obviously still a terrific grade one race. Olympia has the horse to beat, and I think he might get his typical perfect outside stalking trip. He drew the two posts, speedy taxes to his inside, but he simply was not good in the Whitney and did not have a visible, visible excuse. And I think it's honestly just foolish in general to just assume horses are going to bounce back to their top race when they're short prices, especially like Olympiad when they're trying something new for the first time. He's going 10 furlongs for the first time. So Dynamic 1 and First Captain were a nose apart in the mile and a quarter suburban stakes at Belmont. The race only got a 98 buyer, but watching the replay and looking at the race's internal fractions, you'll see how big each of them ran. They both got stuck behind a slow pace and had to move early and wide, and they came home in 23.78 which is a very, very strong final split for a 10 furlong race. Overall, they got their last six furlongs in a 111 and change. Not an easy thing to do considering the distance and considering their ground loss and their pace disadvantage. And that's not that's not a fluke. Before the Suburban, Dynamic One came home in 36.03, despite a wide run in the blame stakes. First Captain came home in well under 18 seconds for his final 316s in the Pimlico Special, again, with a wide trip. So if either of those two can save ground Saturday and get at least a modestly competitive pace up front, I think they'll be finishing fastest of all in a tiring Saratoga stretch. So the play in the Jockey Club Gold Cup is a $20 exacta box, 568 for a total of $120. The Grade 2 Flower Ball, which is also heartbreaking to me because historically it's been a Grade 1 race and a real marquee race for Philly and Mare Turfers. It's been downgraded to a Grade 2 this year, but it is, like I said, a winning your in qualifier for the Breeders' Cup Philly and Mare Turf. It's a less interesting betting race because there's a huge heavy favorite that I have no interest in trying to beat in Warlike Goddess. She is clearly the leader of this division. She was a close third in the Breeders' Cup Philly and Mare Turf last year. She won the Flower Bowl last year. She's just a win machine. She's back to defend her title instead of trying males and a grade one in the Sword Dancer last week. And she's just simply proven she's better than these Phillies and Mares over and over again. And other than two Chad Brown horses who are going to be over bet because it's Chad, there really are no new shooters to speak of to get excited about. So instead of playing within the race, I'm going to single number four, a warlike goddess who's just a machine in the pick five. And it has some good, there are some good sized fields in the sequence, 15% takeout, reliable looking sing, single. That's what I look for when I want to play pick fives and multi-race bets. That clearly is the move to me for, for me. So here's what the ticket looks like. The first leg is the ninth race. I'm going to spread in here. It's a turf allowance optional claimer with a lot of potential winners, I think. I'm going to use the two, three, four, seven, nine, and 10. The second leg is the Flower Bowl, singling number four, Warlike Goddess. The third leg is the Jockey Club Gold Cup. I'm going to use Olympiad, even though I'm trying to beat him within the race. I'm not going to get knocked out of the pick five when a seven to five or eight to five horse wins. It just doesn't make any sense. So I'm going to use two Olympiad, five American Revolution, six first captain, and dynamic one. In the 12th race, I'm going to spread as well. I'm going to use three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and 10. 
And then the fifth leg, which is the 13th race, or yeah, the 13th race, which is a turf sprint. I'm only going to go too deep. I'm going to use number eight, Eyes of Malibu Moon, and number 11, Quick Power Nap. So we'll put this up on the screen. It's a total of $168 on the ticket, two, three, four, seven, nine, ten, with four, with two, five, six, eight, with three, four, five, six, seven, eight, ten, with eight, eleven. Total of 168, several chances for prices in there to really make this pay. And like I said, a single I trust. That's the ideal sequence. A single you feel like you can rely on and then some races surrounding it where you feel like there might be a little bit of chaos and you can maybe get a double digit horse to pop in there. And like I said, with the takeout at 15%, you really only need one of those horses to make it pay. So in total, we're investing $288 of our $558.45 profit from the Haskell. So no matter what happens, we'll still be playing with house money next week, but hopefully we can build on the profit and keep this thing rolling as we reach the halfway point of our six episode Breeders' Cup partnership and get closer and closer, just over two months away now from the Breeders' Cup World Championships, November 4th and 5th at Keeneland. Good luck if you're following along.